Good morning. Thanks everyone so much for joining us. My name is Brooke Berlin, and as many of you know, I'm the North American rep for a company called Swalu Kalahari, or I should say a property called Swalu Kalahari in South Africa, which is a part of the National Geographic Unique Lodges of the World, which is exactly why I thought in this time it would be nice to introduce many of you to some of the other properties that we're affiliated with, especially those in the US and Canada, um, to help with more domestic and regional travel booking for your clients. So I'm really happy today to have um, Jessica Fremlin join us from Siwash. And this is such an amazing story because, I mean, Jessica, she grew up in the industry and basically at Siwash. Um, it is her family's owned and operated lodge. She's held several different roles during her time there, including her current one as director of marketing. And also Jessica serves on the uh, Destination British Columbia Tourism Marketing Committee. And her role is to keep a pulse on the industry and advise the CEO and the board on how to go about their marketing. So we can definitely say that she is good at what she does. And uh, I'm really excited to hear more from her today about Siwash. And again, thank you so much for joining us. So over to you, Jessica. Awesome. Thank you, Brooke. Um, and thank you again, everyone, for joining. Uh, I will go through and just give um, a rundown on Siwash. And if at any point um, it's too quiet, you can't hear me, just uh, let me know. And um, or if I'm going too fast. Uh, and then, yeah, as Brooke said, we'll do questions at the end. Um, however, if you have something like burning uh, in the moment, please do let me know. Um, so I will, can everyone hear me? Am I good? Yeah. Okay, great. Okay. So, um, Siwash is a all-inclusive, uh, boutique and luxury wilderness resort. We're located in British Columbia, um, Canada, uh, very much in interior BC. Uh, we're a National Geographic Unique Lodge of the World, hence the connection with Brooke. Um, and we, so here, I'm going to show you a map. Um, we're very much, uh, yeah, interior, like I said, so halfway sort of between the Canadian Rocky Mountains and BC's West Coast. Uh, so although a lot of people access us by float plane, um, it is a very popular um, drive destination as well for people who are wanting to see a little bit more of the province um, and our neighboring province, Alberta. Um, so the way we work is, like I said, all inclusive um, and boutique. So usually about our comfortable capacity is about 16 people, sort of depending on a uh, group dynamic though. So uh, usually it's maximum like three parties at a time, whether that's families or couples. And um, we have a whole host of privately guided and self-guided uh, wilderness activities and adventures. And um, it's all included in the price of the stay. So the activities, um, the private guides, the food, alcohol, accommodation, all that is under one price. Um, and there are a few additional add-ons such as um, helicopter safaris or reserve wines, wellness treatments. Uh, but for the most part, everything is all under one price. So, uh, for example, some of our guided adventures, um, horseback riding and fly fishing are sort of our flagship activities. Horseback riding is actually known as a Canadian signature experience for us. So it's a super hands-on program, um, starting with sort of a full day's orientation, actually, that begins with uh, groundwork, grooming, then saddling and riding. Uh, and everyone gets paired with their own horse that they will keep for the duration of the stay. Um, and it's for all abilities, beginner to advance. And that goes for all activities actually that we offer. Um, any, yeah, anyone can do them, most ages as well. Uh, there are a few of our activities that we do limit to um, sort of uh, 12 and up, but um, for the most part, we will try Say, for example, with the horseback riding, um, if we have a five-year-old coming, although they might not be able to go out on the trails, um, we can absolutely sort of cater to them and adjust the riding program so that um, they don't really miss a beat and they can still get a ride in around the ranch on the property more so um, and they don't miss anything else. Um, other activities, hiking, biking, wilderness survival, archery, um, 
And then we also have self-guided activities that anyone can do at any time and equipment is provided. The nice thing actually with our fishing program is that um, you can, if you please, after one privately guided session, you can then go out on your own anytime um, on the lake or on our fishing pond and fish yourself. It's catch and release obviously as well. Um, so, and also with all of our guided activities and, and self-guided activities, we are um, just trying really hard, especially with our guides to kind of educate people on, um, you know, how to respectfully um, go about being like with the land. Um, so playing up our sustainability. And um, with that, we actually had a wildfire come through about three, yeah, three summers ago now um and it scarred the land and we have in patches we have black trees um with this really really beautiful flower called fireweed which is bright bright pink um and green and uh wherever it is blackened actually there's always a sea of fireweed so it's really beautiful and unique in its own way um, and then there are patches of this green refugia as well so um and it's very much become a special part of our story that we incorporate into all of our activities um, and we incorporate sort of the sustainability in that as well and that we are trying to educate people sort of on climate change um, and also on how um, you know the the nature grows back as well and how yeah best to um, help the nature grow back too and leave as little of a footprint as possible at all times so um, for example, an itinerary here, um, we've got four nights. We do set either three, four, or seven night stays. Uh, and our arrival and departure days are um, Mondays and Fridays. And we could go beyond seven if, if they wish, but uh, generally people, people don't. And four, I would say, is our most popular. Um, so on arrival and departure days, we don't do privately guided activities uh, because check-in is um, at 3 p.m. and check-out um, is at 11 a.m. And guests get to do one privately guided activity in the morning and one in the afternoon. Um, I can also send uh, any of these sort of assets to anyone who, who would like to um, look at them a little bit longer. Uh, this is just kind of a breakdown of what's included um, in the prices. So prices for 2021 are $19.95 Canadian per adult per night, $14.95 for youth, and $12.95 for children. Uh, and below six, we, we don't charge. Uh, and commission for agents is 10, tour operators generally 20. And our accommodations, um, we are, we're very popular for families. And um, so I didn't actually mention our season runs from either sort of late May, early June, depending on weather, um, to late September, early October. And um, we are very popular for families in July and August, and then on the shoulders, uh, more so couples. So all of our accommodations uh, can either be converted into, yeah, more so couples accommodations uh, or family style rooms. So this, for example, is a suite in our ranch house that has two separate connected rooms. Um, and the children's room here, the one on the bottom, the beds can actually be converted into a king bed. So if two couples wanted to come um, and, share the space they could obviously the the door actually connecting the two um, locks however uh, we would never put two couples that um, although the door locks and everything um, we we wouldn't put another couple that doesn't doesn't know the other couple um, and that hasn't willingly said hey we want to we want to share the space together um, in this sort of layout and most of our rooms actually all of our rooms are in this style um, and we have the ranch house suites, so these two, uh, and then the caribou barn loft suite, which is um, above our lovely hand-hone barn. Um, 
and then our Siwash Star Camp. So our Siwash Star Camp is a glamping experience. Um, and we actually were very well known for glamping uh, before the wildfire hit us. And, um, and then after we decided to recreate it um, with a little bit of a twist with stargazing in there. So uh, we rebuilt our canvas tents on a beautiful platform. Um, and it's, yeah, it's, it's in its own little pod and we plan on actually making either one or two more pods too. Um, but for now, it's, it's a very exclusive, its own thing. So say if a family comes and requests it, it's only theirs for the night. Um, and it's an eight minute walk away from the ranch house. So, and it's sort of on a ridge above um, the lake, which is in front of the ranch. And it has really beautiful views of the lake and of the mountains um, beyond called the Marble Mountain Ranges. And these tents are extremely special because they have above the beds, they have, um, an, uh, they have an alcove where the beds are and they have glass um, ceilings where your heads would, would typically um, be positioned so that people can stargaze at night. Um, there are also outdoor stargazing beds too, a hot tub as you can see and a campfire seating area. Uh, and all of our accommodations are just first come first serve. So um, Star Camp is, is a very, very popular one. Um, and it's, there's no extra price for it or anything. And uh, there are times where we might have a, a gap in our booking calendar where there's just a night where it, it isn't booked for some reason because we have just had to go outside of our um, Monday and Friday arrival. So if that's the case and we ever had a group that really wanted to book Star Camp but it wasn't available for their full stay, however we had a night, we would um, happily put them up there for a night because it, it is, you can, you can get a lot out of it just in one evening, so that's that. Um, I'll go through a few images here and just sort of describe the, the layout of the land so that you can get a sense. Um, so this is in the home meadow looking back at the lodge there in the, in the background. Um, fishing on the lake. Uh, so with all of our fishing, we always start off on um, our fishing pond. That's where we teach people. Um, even if you're, if you're already um, advanced, same with the horseback riding, we always take everyone through our own um, orientation first. Uh, this is the ranch house great room. So um, a lot of people, I mean, during the summers, uh, a lot of people are on the sun deck, but say if it's a little bit cooler weather, you'll find people cozying up here. Um, and all of our dining is actually done on the sun deck. Um, it's very panoramic, has beautiful views of the lake and the meadow. And uh, that being said though, in the off chance that there, there is rain and the weather is bad, then we do have a dining room in the ranch house as well. This is the barn. So um, the accommodation, the room layout that I said, um, was in the barn is in this upper half here. So where the window is there, that's where the suite is. Um, and then I'll go through a few images of the accommodation. So this is the glamping, this is our star camp. Um, a few different angles here of the hot tub and the outdoor stargazing beds and indoors. And then I'll show you a little bit better of a view of the, the alcove where you can stargaze. Um, and then these are our, our ranch house and our caribou barn loft suite accommodation. So um, everything is very authentic uh, wilderness sort of ranch lifestyle, um, but luxury. Our food, um, most of it is grown on site, um, sticking with that sustainability initiative. And if not grown on site, um, we have a local uh, provider very close by where we, get, um, where we get extra vegetables and meats and stuff like that. Uh, we have our own bees, which is wonderful. And now that we have our beautiful fireweed, we have fireweed honey as well. So that's a really nice touch. 
Um, and we, we actually try to incorporate this fire weed, which I'll show you a photo of it, um, sort of in, in a lot of things actually, like we have specific cocktails called a wildfire mar martini, um, and that's got little fireweed garnishes on it. Um, and you'll find it a lot of the time yeah, on, on our food. So the bottom left there, that's our fireweed um, cocktail. Like I said, dining is al fresco, uh, and we can actually set up private dinners at Star Camp as well, if people wish. Um, we are also a very popular spot for buyouts. So we do a lot of, we host a lot of multi-generational sort of family gatherings um, or corporate retreats. And um, although a lot of the time people like to just plan out things day by day, our, our on-site manager will come around in the evenings at dinner and plan the next day with people. However, if they like, um, we can absolutely make a custom itinerary beforehand too if it's um, a group that does want to have everything just planned out. Uh, but still things are very flexible and easy to, easy to schedule. And just a few images of our horse, horseback riding program here. Um, this is, it, it's, a, it's a little bit blurry because it's an action um, picture, but this is me and my horse, Lena, actually. Um, and we are going through uh, one of the patches that the wildfire hit. And um, as you can see, the trees are blackened and there's fireweed everywhere, literally there's a sea of it. Um, so oftentimes if you're kind of in an area where it's more pulled back and you'll look at the forest, there's actually a hue of pink in it as well. So it's, it's really, really beautiful and striking. Um, we've actually had guests come um, specifically because they're like, hey, we, we can't see this anywhere else in the world really. Um, and yeah, this is why we came to be able to see this. So um, yeah, and we, yeah, we're, we're just really trying to show the resilience of nature. We could have closed our doors and given up um, right after that, but you know, we, we thought it was a really, really special part of who we are and we wanna share that with, with all of our guests. Um, and there's definitely a certain type of um, clientele that, uh, that seek that type of experience and we are very rich in experience. Um, something that yeah you, you can't put a monetary value on so um, so yeah, definitely for a certain type but um, usually in the in the luxury travel market that's what that's what um, people are looking for so um, these are great photos of actually some of the activities like more popular for um, children um, is our wilderness survival um, where guides go in literally into the middle of the forest and show you how to build um, a shelter and make a fire, collect food and water. Um, our archery course is, um, is actually a, a hike at the same time. Um, you go through, it's about sort of, there are different variations, but usually one to two to three kilometers even, um, and you hike through the forest. Uh, and like I said, we. Yeah, we always try our best to weave in areas of the green refugia and the wildfire areas as well. Um, helicopter safaris, we have a few different ones. Uh, for example, this year we just added a new river rafting one. Um, so people go on this full day river rafting excursion. Um, and then there's also a um, one where we go to a different river but before that they stop on a mountaintop and do a hike and have a lunch and all that um, those can be booked either on site or um, beforehand usually our guests will just sort of let us know that they're interested in them um, before and then we'll, we'll pencil it in and then choose the best day uh, depending on sort of weather when they're here um trying to think if i have fun in anything in terms of the activities I don't think I have but um, yeah that is that's the that's the rundown so I would love to answer questions now Excellent. thank you so much Jessica and as we're waiting for um, questions to come in 
what most people probably don't know about me is that even though I'm from New York, I used to spend all of my summers in Colorado. I was junior staffing and leading these kind of like outward bound Knowles type of courses. And so I've been able to hike in areas that have that extensive fire burn as well. And I agree, I love it. That deep black char on the trees with then all of that young new growth and that really vibrant color, it's just incredible. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, the contrast is, is so striking, so striking. Yeah, I think it's really incredible. Um, I have a question myself actually to start with because I'm really intrigued by the uh, star camp. So I wanna make sure that I understand that correctly too because that is something that is such a popular experience in Africa and different properties kind of run them differently. So did you say that basically on a first come basis, say I want to come to Siwash, I would get in touch and say, I want to come to Siwash for your four nights or your seven nights, and I want to book the star camp and stay in the star camp for those full four nights, correct? Or is it always an add-on to one of the other cottages? Yeah, that's exactly, exactly how it goes. Um, and then in the off case that um, they're coming and we have a hole in our booking calendar where for some reason we've had to book someone out of um, out of cycle and the star camp isn't available for the rest of their stay except for that one night and they're like hey we really really want to fit in that night we don't have any flexibility with our dates we still want to come we will absolutely put them out there for that night and then so if that's a possibility say say I'm there for seven nights and I'm paying for my room for seven nights and you have a break where it's available for one night do I then just go and have that experience and it's complimentary and I, I still in essence have the room that I'm paying for yes yeah so as of right now it's complimentary we have chatted about um, doing it as an add-on um, but as of right now complimentary okay Great. That's clearly the one that I'm the most interested in. It looks amazing. <laughs> Does anybody have any questions for Jessica? Now, you said also that you are kind of open right now or um, without guests, but that you start having guests coming in in the next week or so. Um, have you kind of seen um, a good, you know, pick up with your domestic tourism and have you been able to kind of maintain a busyness throughout this year? Yes, so we have, um, demand has gone up a lot for domestic tourism. Um, luxury travel isn't, uh, isn't a huge thing um, on the Canadian consumer side, so uh, that has been tricky. But we have found, um, like, say, for example, right now we have a few days uh, where we don't have any guests, but then the rest of August we're actually fully booked. Um, that being said, though, we are doing lower capacity and we're just hosting one group at a time. Um, so fully exclusive experience, mm -hmm. um, but for a regular for a regular price, not a bio price or anything, just strictly a COVID sort of value added um, offer. Uh, so, yeah, slowly picking up more, but um, but still sort of a trickle. And can you speak about your staff to guest ratio um, during normal times and can have your staff decreased because of what's going on with COVID and having a smaller guest count um, with private booking? So just that guest to staff ratio. Yeah, so guest to staff ratio, one to one, two to one, um, two to one staff in, in normal times. Um, and now, sorry, what was the second part of that again? Well, for me, it was just, has that changed? So, you know, cause nothing is normal this year. So in typical years, say you're running totally full, then you've got the two yeah. to one. And now because you're doing just private bookings, have you been able to kind of maintain all of your staff or is that also changing? Yes. So that has changed now too. Yeah. We are running off of our core team. Um, which is sort of in between, um, depending, we might bring in a guide, say if it's for a helicopter safari or whatever. Um, it'll be sort of like six to eight right now, um, which still, now that we're doing the lower capacity as well because of COVID, it still, it ends up being um, that same personal, personal service excellence. Um, usually, yeah, one-to-one -one or two-to-one sort of thing at least. 
Um, so yeah, not, not changing actually a lot in terms of what they're getting. Can you speak a little bit more about access and in general, the specific question is charter flights from Vancouver, what airstrip do they land at? So, um, so for the, so coming from Vancouver flying, they either, um, they float plane from Vancouver to a lake called Young Lake, which um, we organize also, so I know um, if they are interested in flying directly to Siwash, they let us know and then we organize that um, and then invoice them for, for the flight. Um, and at that, that lake is a remote lake, about a 10, 15 minute ground transfer from Siwash, which is complimentary. Um, so that's it for the float planes, but if they wanted to, um, speed up the process, not drive, they could also fly to either, um, of two regional airports that one is about a two hour drive away and then the other is three. Um, and then also we have had people, um, come with private planes and they park actually in sort of the closest town, which, um, we then do a ground transfer for, and it's about 45 minutes, an hour away. And if they are doing the um, the flights to the regional airports, then generally they're renting a car from there um, and then coming in. However, we could do a ground transfer as well. Those are um, extra cost add on them. How long is the drive from Vancouver? And just out of personal curiosity, how far away is it from Nelson, BC? Uh, so from Vancouver, it's about five to six hours. And then Nelson, I believe, would be about six as well. Mm -hmm. And you did speak a little bit about rates, and I believe that rates are going to be included in the follow-up that we send. But can you just again kind of go over a high level of rates and inclusions? Yes. So um, here, I will. what I will do is I'll share my screen again um, so that I can pull up that so that if anyone just like to look at it at the same time. Okay. Um, okay. So oh, there we go. Um, how do I can can you guys see this Q and A thing? Is that mm -hmm. yep. Yeah. Yep. There we go. Okay. Okay. So um, our rates and inclusions uh, rates, like I said, for adults, um, it's it's per yeah. So our rates are per person per night. Um, 1995 Canadian per adult per night, 1495 Canadian for youth, so ages 13 to 18, um, and 1295 Canadian per child. Um, below six years old, we wouldn't charge, uh, typically because they wouldn't be participating fully in all the activities. However, we would we would still incorporate them as best as we can. Um, but say ones like the shooting, that's just um, unsafe to have anyone actually like under 12 doing that one. Um, so all of, so the accommodation, um, the food, housekeeping, uh, Wi-Fi, little things like that, um, alcohol, except for reserve wines, um, all of the equipment for activities, the private guides, everything's included in that price. Um, and then add-ons would be things like the transfers or the helicopter safaris, um, wellness treatments we do offer as well. Uh, gratuities are totally optional at the guest discretion. Um, usually people do um, about 10 to 15%. And you said in the presentation that what's included is a guided morning activity and afternoon activity. If people were just very active or very, you know, interested, could they have a third activity within the day? And is that complimentary or would they then pay for it? They, um, typically we wouldn't, we wouldn't add it on, um, in, in a regular day if they were already doing two. However, um, we do say if it's an arrival or departure day um, and we have the capacity to be able to do it and they do want to do an activity uh, when they get here or before they leave, then they can pay extra for it at that point. And it's $5.95 per person per activity. Okay. Which regional airport is best, Williams Lake or Kamloops? 
Um, Williams Lake is usually where we send people, but uh, both. Uh, Kamloops is a three hour, like two and a half, three hour drive away, whereas Williams Lake is two. Um, so Williams Lake is, is a little bit better by a pinch. I've actually been to Kamloops. I love this. I feel like I'm back in BC already. <laughs> <laughs> with the horse riding, because that's something I'm very familiar with, with Swalu. We have an equestrian program as well. Can you tell us how many horses do you have in total? And is it possible, say, because you're talking about doing private groups now if you had a group of people a family let's say where some people were more experienced some people were less experienced you've got an age difference is it easy for an entire group to ride together or separate based upon interest and available and ability um so together we do really what we actually have a lot of the time where where families come and yeah they're all scattered abilities and because our string of horses, we have 25 horses, um, all ranging from sort of beginner to advanced level um, horses. So depending on actually how it works at the time of booking, people um, are sent a, or I guess are sent a pre-arrival kit, which allows you to state any like um, food, like dietary preferences or restrictions. Um, and then experience on certain activities like the horseback riding. So um, we get those sheets before they arrive and then we do a horse assignment, um, sort of just like cater to their ability. And then with that, um, it makes it very easy for us to put everyone in the same group because they, they have different um, sort of level horses. And um, if there are scenarios where like it's, it's really not uh, working and we have we have say like the parents like really really want to go um, a little bit faster and the kids are just not at that level um, we can absolutely out on the trails we can um, with the guide the guide can sort of coordinate that where you know they, they go up ahead and stop with the with the kids and then the parents come too um, or we could do we could separate the group they would have to pay extra like if they if they had two private guides um, but we can absolutely cater to it if it's if it's not working. But most of the time we find that it aligns just fine. And for true equestrians that want to come and just ride every day that they're there, that's fine. That can be the activity that they choose and they can ride in their morning and in the afternoon. Yeah, absolutely. And um, and also I'm I'm sort of making it seem like people have to come and like do all these activities all the time we are also very much a leisurely destination too. Like if people want to come and just stay in store camp and not leave their bed or the hot tub, um, or yeah, just rotate in between the bed, the hot tub and the star camp um, outdoor beds, they absolutely can. Um, so yeah, there's no pressure to, to get out there and burn 1000 calories a day or anything. And then you have me and I'm like, can I do a third and a fourth? Yeah. <laughs> what are your... Yeah. September value added offers. It's mentioned on your website to call and ask for details. Yes. So right now we are doing a value added offer where if people stay for seven nights, uh, we'll include a complimentary helicopter safari. And uh, for three or four nights, we'll include a private alfresco dinner. Um, as I mentioned, during COVID, we are doing, um, for August, we're doing uh, just one group at a time, even if it's a couple, um, it's just them. However, in September, we are going to um, host two to three groups at a time, depending on if it's families or couples. And I might have missed this. You, There's no child uh, age minimum requirement, correct? Families can bring young children, and then it's just a matter of which activities work for them. Absolutely, yeah. And uh, we do have childcare available at extra cost though. Um, in fact, most of our families like to, like to stay together anyways though. But. For people that are staying seven nights, or you spoke about even the possibility of longer, because I think we all are seeing people wanting to stay in fewer places for longer um, with their travels these mm -hmm. days. Are you also able to provide laundry service? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. And, and that's something that uh, we can do that. Um, yeah. Any day for them. Although we do try to 
try to limit it um, just on the sustainability front. Uh, but yeah, you can do it anytime. Um, also, uh, yeah, on that note of longer stays, uh, something we have been chatting about, um, for example, if the borders do open up soon with the U.S. Um, in when? <laughs> when, they, <laughs> when they do, please, 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 when they do, <laughs> yeah, if in the next five years they open, um, we, uh, we were chatting about, yeah, you know, possibility they probably will keep this 14 day quarantine, uh, maybe not if they do testing, but if they do, uh, we could be a popular destination for doing that quarantine, like say if, if it is, um, you know, a, a corporate thing and they, yeah, they have to go quarantine for somewhere and they don't just want to go anywhere, um, they want a super unique experience, they can come to us for two weeks, um, or yeah, or if it's just a family um anything so yeah we are very willing to do longer stays as well you mentioned corporate just now and you mentioned something about you know groups and team building earlier in the presentation do mm -hmm. you have a boardroom projector things that you know a, a forum or a board might need if they are coming up to do more of a, a, a business getaway Mm -hmm. Yes, we do have, um, we do have actually several different rooms where we could sort of, depending on the size, we could uh, set them up in there and a projector and all that. However, a lot of the times um, we'll do it sort of in unique ways where they'll ride to, um, because that, yeah, they're, they're sort of looking for um, a little bit, a little bit different experiences. Um, and we'll say ride to um, a bluff where they get off and have a picnic lunch and then they all sit around a campfire and have a sort of a, a team meeting there. Um, so we do have um, all the amenities, but typically um, we do a little bit more outside of the box. You know, a question actually that we asked yesterday because there are many people that are very familiar with Africa joining these calls. Mm -hmm. There are times when you have private guides that accompany a group or put together their own group and then they're considered a tour leader. Do you have guide accommodations for people that are accompanying a group? Uh, yes, yeah, absolutely. And um, yeah, depending on capacity of that group, like I've said, our, our comfortable number is 16. However, we can actually go above that because we do have a few accommodations, say in the ranch house that we will open up um, that are just as nice, but just for our personal preference and, and how we work in terms of our personal service excellence, we, we always like to keep it at that 16. So we will go above and we will open up more. Um, and most of the time, if it is yeah, a guide accompanying, then we will put them um, in those accommodations. But if, if we're really, we're really pushing it, um, then we have actually uh, tented accommodations that are sort of that our staff are in as well that we will open up and, and jazz up for them too. I love it. Do you have an accompanying guide rate? Uh, no, we do not. It's just, just sticks to the per person rate. Uh, but we do, we, we do custom quotes. Sorry, I've lost my screen here. Um, we do custom quotes for our bios or corporate retreats. Obviously. for that. Would you actually, I'm sorry, Jessica, your sound cut out, at least for me for a second. Would you just say again what you mentioned about uh, you do custom rates for groups? Yes, yeah, so we'll do a custom rate. If it's a bio booking, if it's a size where it is a bio and they want exclusive use, uh, we will do it sort of case by case basis. Um, and we'll, we'll give them a custom rate. Okay. Mm -hmm. So your information is very handy for people to have. Yes, yeah. <laughs> so say for example, yeah, if it, if it is a group where there is an accompanying guide, although we generally do our per person uh, per night rates, we will account for the fact that like say if that guide isn't, isn't um, soaking up all of our activities and, and going to be drinking as much or whatever, then we will, we will um, give them a fair rate based off that included in the entire cost. And if somebody has a much larger multi-gen group or a much larger group in general, are there any other properties near you that you would say combine where a lot of overflow could be housed or do you have the ability to house overflow if, if again it's just a very large group or family yeah so we have um we've we've never had this before but we have chatted about it because we've had inquiries for weddings specifically actually 
um, where they've said, hey, we want to have um, like 20 people actually staying with us on site, the actual wedding party we need there, but then we have um, like 50 other guests that want to stay nearby, but they want to come in during the day. Um, and we have chatted, there are actually a few like guest ranches nearby that we would be able to, um, to, to have them hosted there and then do sort of a shuttle type service in um, obviously like a, a scheduled thing. But yeah, we absolutely um, very much, um, they just let us know what they wish and we'll, we'll do our very best to make it happen. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Pleasure. So as of right now, we don't have any other questions. I can give it another minute in case anybody thinks of any. And otherwise, uh, there will be a follow-up email that goes out tomorrow, and that will include all of Jessica's information, information on SciWash, the website, social, um, pretty much anything that you would need to be able to get in touch with her. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and please do feel free to reach out um, anytime. I'm also very much a, a call type person, so if you ever um, would just yeah prefer not to not to email, I can hop on a Zoom or a phone call anytime as well. Or we can have an in-person meeting up at Siwash. <laughs> yes, yes, even better. Yeah. Um, also, one more thing. Sorry, it just popped into my brain. Um, with longer stays, for example, uh, another aspect of our writing program. Um, which is why we're a Canadian signature experience is if people stay for seven nights, um, they will minimum, um, then they're allowed to actually go out horseback riding on their own, given that they've proven um, they can navigate the trails uh, perfectly fine, and also that they're, they're going to be safe on handling their horses. Very nice. Yeah, I work with another property in Kenya where basically, you know, we've got an amazing equestrian program, but you have to be seasoned. So I ride at Swallow every year. I've never once ridden at Old Jogi. And if you're going to yeah. ride at Old Jogi, you're getting on a horse and you're showing that you know how to handle that horse before they're taking yeah. the approach. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Brilliant. Well, then I think we'll say thank you very much to everyone who joined us today. Again, just really appreciate your time. Jessica, I appreciate your time and joining us and making this happen. So I hope everyone has a great day. Thank you, guys. Have a good one. Bye.